Welcome to Rivermont Collegiate. Come on into our parlor. So here we're in the Bettendorf Mansion. Joseph Bettendorf had this mansion built in 1914. And now Joseph Bettendorf was in the railroad industry and he wanted a destination for other railroad moguls that would be coming from New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and other places. So he built this mansion as an English manor. The mansion itself is about 30,000 square feet. Uh, we have a few classrooms here now, uh, but mainly it's our business offices. Let me tell you a little bit about Rivermont Collegiate. Rivermont is an independent school. We start from our pre-kindergarten, which is our three-year-olds, all the way up to 12th grade. We're a small school. We have about 250, 260 students here all the way through 12th grade. Being an independent school is a little different than a private school, you know, like your Catholic schools, etc. Basically, it means we are 100% nonprofit. Uh, we do not receive any state or federal funding. All of our operating budget comes from tuition dollars and fundraising. Now, the good news about this is we do not need to follow state or national guidelines. What I like to say is every child learns differently. And we give our teachers a tool belt, if you will. So that first month or so of school, our teachers are going to get to know your child. And they're going to figure out what tool it is that that child needs in order to succeed. Rivermont uh, is a school for students that on the academic scale are right at average and all the way up through gifted. We're going to make sure that we give them the best education possible. Now how we do that is we make an environment that's fun to learn. Now a, a fun learning environment means that students are going to work harder because they enjoy coming to school. They enjoy working with their teachers and they feel trusted by their teachers. Now here at the school um, we have different programs and you're going to be able to kind of choose your own adventure if you will. You'll be able to select if you want to learn more about our lower school or more about our middle and upper school. But to start, let me show you around the mansion here. Ready? Through these doors over here is our reading room. Now at Rivermont we have several spaces that are flexible spaces. This was Mr. Bettendorf's fancy dining room, if you will, when he was living here. Our middle and upper school students all have study halls built into their schedule. So this would be one of the places that a student that has what's called open study hall is able to come and spend their time. They can get some homework done. They could work on a class project. We have clubs that can meet in here, um, as well as our teachers will come and help students out in here as well. So it's a great flex classroom. Come on through. So we're going to start all the way upstairs on our third floor and then work our way down. It's a lot of stairs, so I'll tell you what, I'll meet you up there. All right, here we are on the third floor of our mansion. Now, as I said, this is a mansion. This was built as an English manor originally just over 100 years ago. Up here, this floor used to be the ballroom. This is where Mr. Bettendorf would have all of his fancy dress dances. Now, this has become one of our math classrooms. Pretty cool, huh? In this math classroom, our sixth graders start with a class called Algebraic Principles. Our seventh graders do pre-algebra, our eighth graders do algebra, and then our ninth graders take geometry up here. One really cool feature is our giant whiteboard wall. We want those kids to be able to, you know, get all those ideas flowing, and what better way than to have a wall where they can write it all out. Let's come over to our English classroom. This is our English classroom, or our middle school English classroom, I should say. In here, we have our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade English classes that meet, as well as our high school AP English classes meet up in here. Another cool feature for our middle schoolers, every year, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, one quarter, the students will spend in Latin. Uh, 
and that is also done right up in here. It's a great way for students to get a basis of the Latin languages as well as it helps them with their sciences. All right, now we're gonna head down to our second floor. Follow me. Here's our middle and upper school Spanish classroom. Now our students start taking Spanish as early as pre-kindergarten for the three-year-old classroom. Our students from pre-K all the way up to fifth grade take Spanish. And then once they get into middle school and up into high school, they get to choose between Spanish and French. As you can see, this is a super fun classroom. Our Spanish teacher likes to do more of an immersion style class where instead of memorizing the conjugated verbs, she's going to use a more lifestyle uh, class in order for you to understand that Spanish language. Now we're going to move over to our French classroom here. Now our French class is taught by someone, uh, one of many of our teachers that actually has a doctorate. So his doctorate is in Franco studies. Uh, it's an amazing class. He also works on a lot of the culture of French speaking countries. So students really understand where the language come fr came from and how to use it in an everyday sense. We go all the way up through our AP French as well as French literature and French film classes for those honors students. Come on with me. Now we're going to head over to our middle school common room. So here is where all of our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students uh, will start their day. They have their lockers, they can get all their stuff ready for the day. But every morning we start with a morning meeting. This is a great opportunity for our middle schoolers to kind of get centered, get their minds right for the way, uh, the things that are going to be offered that day. It's also a great opportunity for students to make announcements. Uh, they get to learn what the lunch option is for those kids that want to buy lunch that day what kind of sports activities or clubs are meeting that day, etc. Now, through here is a real exciting classroom. This is our resource center. Now, as I said before, Rivermont, uh, the ideal student is on the academic level of average all the way to genius level. But no matter where you are on that academic level, you may have times where you struggle. And that's okay. We're here to help. So we have a resource instructor, a teacher whose job it is to make sure that students are doing well in their classes. This teacher also works with our other teachers in helping design ideas to help all that classroom fun keep going. So students during study halls can come over here to get extra help. They can come in the afternoons. Or for those kids that really need an extra guided practice, we're here to help with that as well. Now we're gonna head all the way down to our basement. I'll meet you there. All right, so now we're in the basement of the mansion. Here we have a couple of classrooms that are used for both our lower school students, middle and upper school students. Right behind me here, this is one of our science labs that is for our kindergarten through fifth grade, as well as a dedicated sixth grade science lab. Come on through. Talking about making learning fun, this is a great environment for students to really explore. We have a lot of plant-based sciences going on. This is a great space because not only do we have a lab setting for these kids, we also have a traditional classroom setting as well. So kindergarten through fifth grade sciences are awesome and we're really trying to get their minds to, to know what it is to explore, to really think about all those aspects of science. Starting in sixth grade, we're going to do a little more of the earth sciences, introductions to sciences as well. Now let's head over to our other middle school science classroom.
This is a more formal science lab, but once again, you have the room divided in two. Right now, we're standing in the classroom style. And then down the hall here, we have our lab setting. So our seventh and eighth graders take science in here, as well as an environmental science class for our upper schoolers. Now, this is a pretty funky room. Actually, this used to be a bowling alley back when Mr. Bettendorf owned the home. Now let's head over to our last classroom down here in the basement. This is our lower school Spanish classroom. As I said, all of our students starting in pre-kindergarten through fifth grade take Spanish. So our kindergarten through fifth grade students actually travel over to this classroom twice a week for Spanish instruction. And then our Spanish teacher will work with our pre-K and JK students in their own classrooms as well. Let's head over to the gym. All right, this way to the gym. One thing that's nice about being a pre-K through 12th grade school is our younger kids have access to big kid facilities. So great gymnasium here for our middle and upper school students to play volleyball, basketball, badminton, etc. But our younger kids get to use this space as well for their PE classes. And on days when the weather's not cooperating, they get this entire space for recess. Being active is very important for young children as they learn. We also have a weight facility through here for our students to lift weights, um, cardio equipment, and for our rowing team during the winter months when they can't be out on the river, they get to use this space for exercising and being on the rowing machines to keep that up. Finally, we're gonna head over to our art cottage. I'll meet you there. Here we are in our art classroom, which is in the carriage house. Now the carriage house was Mr. Bettendorf's garage exactly. Uh, this is where he kept his carriages and his horses. We recently completely remodeled this building so that we've got this state-of-the-art art classroom as well as a ceramic studio towards the back. Now for art, our kindergarten all the way through 12th grade students are able to use this space for many different art classes. That could be fiber arts, two-dimensional art, three-dimensional art, photography, ceramics, sculpture, and many others. This is a great space. Also in this building, you'd find our girls' dormitory upstairs, as well as a living space behind me. Let's head back over to the mansion. That wraps up the mansion and carriage house tour. One other thing I wanted to talk about is college preparation. This is important if your child is three or 18. What we're going to do is we're going to help them not only be successful in college, but beyond. Our college program uh, is very robust. We start working with our eighth graders and our college counselor, talking about the importances of high school, what the next steps will be. As those students get older, ninth, 10th, 11th, and then finally 12th grade, we're gonna be with them every step of the way, as well as you, the parents. We want to make sure that you understand all the steps that are required and also to help you find not only that great fit school for your child, but as much scholarships as possible. All of our graduates are accepted to four-year universities and accepted to the best schools in the U.S., often with a very sizable scholarship. Now it comes to choose your own adventure. You can go back and you can take a look at our lower school tour or our middle and upper school tour. Just make sure, if you're in that lower school tour, to pay attention to our auditorium where our music program also takes place. We have general music from pre-K all the way through fifth grade, and then we have instrumental music as well as choir for our middle and upper schools. Once again, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you here in person soon.